now to the boy band Khan that rocked the music world and shocked fans of some of the most famous supergroups in the industry. It's the story of the man behind the scenes who pulled all the strings, and it's a documentary streaming on YouTube today. Boy band craze to me was this amazing time in history. It was the 1990s, and bands like the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, LFO, and O-Town were burning up the charts. And it was the aviation entrepreneur turned music mogul, Lou Pearlman, who lit the fire. Lance Bass, who produced the boy band Khan, was part of singing sensation NSYNC, and at one time considered Pearlman family. He kind of changed the the sound of music in the late 90s. He did a lot of good things, but he also did some really bad things. Some of the really bad things Perlman did included perpetrating a nearly $320 million Ponzi scheme to pay for all of his business endeavors and conning his boy bands out of their hard-earned cash. Lou was hyping up the fact that this was gonna be our first check presentation. I open up the envelope, I see the check, and oh my gosh, like my heart sunk. I, I couldn't believe the number I was looking at. I could have made this much working full-time at Starbucks. It was the Backstreet Boys who first sued Perlman over being built out of their earnings. We ended up working it all out and got everything that we needed to move on. Perlman's other groups either disbanded or broke all ties with him. And Sync famously released No Strings Attached when they made their big break. Perlman also came under scrutiny for reportedly behaving inappropriately with some of the boys in his bands, although he was never charged with any crimes related to those allegations. Yet to this day, some of his boy band members are his staunchest supporters. Lou gave us all the ability to have life. I gotta take a break for a second, guys. All right? Yeah. But others can't decide if he was father figure or fraud, including Bass. It went from Jolly Lou to like, I don't give a f about you right now. Was anything ever true or was it all It's these deep-seated mixed emotions about Perlman that Bass says were at the heart of his film. You're very kind of torn at the end of how to feel about him and that's exactly what I wanted people to feel like because that's how we feel. In 2008, Perlman was convicted and sentenced to 25 years in prison for the Ponzi scheme. He died of a heart attack behind bars in 2016. Documentary director Aaron Kunkel sums up the moral of this tortured, ultimately tragic story. This is about how someone can con people, even smart people. The Boy Band Con, the Lou Perlman story, is available for streaming beginning today on the YouTube Originals Premium channel.